Welcome back. Well, this is a very special moment and a really special day. I am here with Helen Hunt, the actress, director, writer, producer, philanthropist, <laughs> advocate, and the list goes on. And we are talking about reimagining your life at every age. And Helen, you've been acting since you were nine. Is that right? <laughs> so you have had the chance to reinvent a few times. <laughs> a few times. And I think most of us think about actors as people who reinvent every time, right? You step into a new role, you have to really find that person. But I don't think we equate it with reinventing ourselves, like really looking at the acting process as something that we live through mm -hmm. every day. Do you feel like your acting experience and the changing of roles gives you a different view on how to reinvent yourself? I mean, I, I guess so. I, you have no choice but to reinvent yourself because you get older and then you better do something. And um, yeah, acting uniquely offers you the opportunity. I'm not playing 19-year-old parts anymore. I'm playing women who are 50, 60, right. 70, whatever. Um, to, I use each acting job as an opportunity to look at myself, to look at the moment I'm in, um, to look at what I want. And in that way, it's a job that doesn't get boring. So I want to take people back for just a minute because they're looking at you and they're like, wait, I know her from so many things, <laughs> right? So I think most well-known is Mad About You. And that's, that was the earliest stage. But that also opened you up to becoming an advocate for women's rights and equality in Hollywood and beyond. Now we're talking about aging and reimagining. Um, so in your moment in time, you've always found a message that was important to you, too. So how do you evolve those messages? I mean, to be honest, it comes from a selfish, and I don't say that in a pejorative way, but it comes because something affects me or matters to me. My grandmother had Alzheimer's. It made me want to show up for people with Alzheimer's. I care about, I have a daughter. And I'm a woman, and so I care about pay parity, which I've just had to fight for recently. Um, so it's not like I say, what does the world need? Let me do that. It's what's bothering me, what's breaking my heart, and what can I do? Really, so I'll feel better, honestly, more than I'm going to help somebody and fix anything. I will feel better if I do something today. And I think that's a message, actually, that most of us need to hear also. You don't have to fix the world. No, you do it because it feels better to do it. Right, and fix your own part in it. Yeah. The roles you've played, I actually have two more questions. <laughs> the roles you've played have been so varied, mm. and I have loved preparing for this interview like none <laughs> other. It has been a walk down memory lane. We're about the same age, and I remember you. I didn't remember Pioneer Woman, but, no. <laughs> but when I found that one, that was, that was really fun. Um, but over over all this time, how do you select your roles? How do you, what makes you say yes versus no? The first thing that makes me say yes is if they ask me to do it. <laughs> so often you're asked, how do you choose the roles? Well, first you have to get a job, which at any stage for almost everybody is not easy. Um, and then you weigh these things like, do I care about the story is the most important thing? Are they paying me in a way that seems fair is important? Um, am I working with people that I care about? And if two of the three of those things is good, you do it. Yeah. Okay. That's just a... <laughs> It'd be great if you get three out of three, but it's rare. It doesn't happen often. Yeah. But it, that also led you to write and produce and move to other positions which are available. I think a lot of women, a lot of people in general, don't necessarily look that far ahead to say, what else can I do? But of all the things that you've done, what really speaks to your heart? Um, to be honest, I wrote and directed a movie called Then She Found Me, which not a lot of people have seen. Uh, you can find it now on one of those things. No, you definitely can. It's things. out there. It's out there, finally. It's a movie that I wrote, co-wrote, directed, uh, and acted in with Bette Midler and Colin Firth and Matthew Broderick. I love dropping those names because they agreed to do the movie with me. And, and big parts of my heart and soul are in that movie. So in a way, any biography that was ever written about me, it would be easier just to look at that movie, even though it's not my story. What those people want and care about comes from a very deep place in me. So as a, as a 
girl mom and a mom to your daughter, what message would you want us to send out to the next generation as we move through this evolution? I don't know if I have a message. Um, be true, be fierce, make mistakes, own your mistakes, somewhere in there. Yeah, don't be afraid. <laughs> yeah. Okay, or be you. afraid and then... Be very afraid. It's okay to be afraid. <laughs> Yeah, be very afraid to do it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. Thank you so much for Thank joining us Thank you so much. Today. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Oh, my and we'll be right back. <laughs>